Hello everyone, Rob, and in this video we're going to go over some of the features that are inside of the Ecamm Live Beta uh, version 3.8.5, which means that pretty soon these are going to be in the regular version uh, from all the beta testers out there. If you are interested in beta testing this just like I am, uh, make sure you check out the links below uh, and it will give you access to the beta and sort of the group that is for the betas. Now, uh, again, there is a laundry list of things that are going to be new in this. One of the big ones uh, is that Ecamm Live is now going to work natively on the M1 chip. So that, that's kind of big news for the software programming side. Um, other things that are new is the ability to have a blue screen rather than the green screen. And right now, uh, I do have two versions of Ecamm running right now. I have the beta and the live. So again, another point of joining the beta, it does not overwrite your current Ecamm live program. So in, anyways, uh, in order to enable the blue screen versus the green screen, uh, I'm gonna go into the beta and uh, open that up here. And I'm gonna go to the preferences. So I'm gonna go up here to the Ecamm live beta. I'm gonna go all the way down to the preferences. And uh, we can see over here in the video, if we go all the way to the bottom, we now have the option for blue screen. So if we look over here, uh, we see green screen. If I check mark this, we now have the option for blue screen. So the reason why that they introduced the blue screen is there, there are people out there that would be utilizing the blue uh, green screen that they would want to take advantage of. Uh, maybe they're showing some plants uh, that are green, and the green would obviously be greened out, right, masked out. So anyways, you do have the option there. Again, no no change from how it operates. The check mark goes there. You choose what you want, and you can see you have the fade level. Okay, so uh, again, things to think about if your eyes are blue. Uh, you may not want to go with the blue screen. But anyways, uh, it is there inside of the beta. And like I said, hopefully this, this, all this stuff will be uh, released, is what the developers are saying, uh, in the next version number there. So the other thing that is in the beta that is coming, which is the window up here, and it's called program. So they call it the program window. And what this is here, it's just another miniature preview area. Uh, before, people could have used the output up here at the top and the video monitor, and you can shove this to an actual live output of another monitor. But uh, this, this little window here gives you a, a clean look at what is being broadcasted out to your live audience or, or to your recording. Okay. Now, uh, the other reason that this program window is here is we now have the ability to go ahead and manipulate uh, or have a preview window, and then we have a live window, okay? And to demonstrate that, I'm going to record, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the record, I'm gonna hit the pause, because our preview mode is only invoked whenever we are either streaming live or if we are in a record kind of mode. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. I'm going to hit the pause button on here. And that way I can enter preview mode. You can see now I have a button down here in the left, which means that I can choose to enter preview mode. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you see here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag my text overlay over here. But you can see over in my program window, that did not change neither did my video. So that's the thing to remember is, you know, hey, it's using my camera, uh, but I'm setting up my scene right here, so that way I can somewhat be dynamic, get things set up here, and then when I'm ready for it to go to the live window, all I have to do is click on the publish button, and you can see that it, it takes effect right there. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag that right back up. Again, you can see that in my preview window on the bottom right here, that it is not updating until I hit the publish. Okay, so as you can see, I can also just return to live mode and 
uh, anytime I move this, it is live interaction right there over in the preview. Again, we went from the preview mode to live mode, okay? So there's the button down there. Again, that is new in the beta. That's going to be in the upcoming release, all right? Now, the, the other things that we'll see here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on finish. It says that uh, we are now able to broadcast to LinkedIn. Uh, so they have some LinkedIn settings here. Uh, the developers did mention that LinkedIn is kind of strict with who is allowed to record or allowed to stream to LinkedIn. So that's going to be on you and your user account. But uh, Ecamm Live, as long as LinkedIn has approved you, uh, you should be good to go with the LinkedIn. All right. Uh, other things is the ability to resize images past their regular size. So let me let me demonstrate that here. I'm going to go to the normal Ecamm Live, and I have this image here. And this is one of the problems that we have always dealt with, which is, you know, you can't go any further than this, and you are stuck to the size of Ecamm Live. You can see that you see some blue of my sweatshirt down here at the bottom. If I bring it down here, you see some upper ceiling space. And that's not exactly what uh, we would like, right? So um, how do we fix this? Well, in the new beta, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, I'm in the beta up here, and I have that same image right here. And so now you'll, you'll see that I'm able to grow it. I'm able to move it past the bounds, which is really nice. And the other neat thing with the overlay images, we now have the ability to grab any corner to resize as well. All right. So before, uh, I believe that we were just, we were limited in our dragging ability. Again, this is Ecamm version 3.7. Uh, you can see that uh, I'm trying to grab up here and it's not resizing. You can definitely make it go full whatever your settings are on your stream. Okay, so again, a nice feature that has been added. Uh, the other thing that we have now is the ability to kind of add these to the background. Okay, so what, what does that mean? You know, if we go over here um, and we drag this into the show in background uh, and we go up here to the source and we go to blank, you can see that that image takes up the whole scene. And that, that means that you can also have a, a background that will stay there throughout all your scenes and you can kind of build these camera in overlays. Right, so uh, again, pretty pretty neat feature. Uh, it also supports video. So let me go ahead and turn the video off and turn or turn the video on and turn the image off. And you can see how it even runs the video. And again, uh, the sizes of these videos and the image that you saw uh, were definitely not the size of what my stream is set to. So. It did auto format to make sure that it fit there without any uh, borders or anything like that. Okay. All right, so some other uh, minor things that uh, have been updated in Ecamm Live uh, the text uh, overlays that we all have uh, before. Uh, again, I'm in right now in Ecamm Live 3.7.7. And we have the fly-in option. And the fly-in option uh, for right now only is in an auto type of placement. So if we were to say, hey, you know what? I would like this thing to fly in from the right. Well, we'd have to put it on the right side of the screen. And that's how it's going to fly in, right? So it will pick the closest spot, either right, left, and that's where it's going to show up. Again, if I were to put this over here and do the quick fly in, we see that it behaves just like I described. Now, if we go to the beta section 
and we double click this and we can say you know what now we have the option for it to fly in either from the left or to the right or we can go to the standard auto which is what we've all been using before so uh, if i want that to fly from the left i'll click on that click save notice this is on the far right if i click the preview you can see that it is taking the longest path to get there all right so uh, again small feature nice feature giving us more options to choose uh, the other thing that we uh, have on the list here is the custom hotkeys um, if we take a look at what we had before uh, this is what ecamm live has suggested those overlays to be so how would we go about changing those well you have to uh, wait for them to come out with it or use the beta so let's take a look at what we have to do for beta um, if i wanted this one to be uh, a command nine so i'm going to hit the command button and then I'm going to hit the 9, and that just assigned that one Command 9. If I want this one to be Command 8, Command 8. And now I'm able to switch between my scenes, like so. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that is a pretty neat feature, allowing you all to customize your hotkeys so that way they are more permanent rather than based upon how the overlays are set up. All right, uh, the next one that is in here is more or less for the folks that want to use uh, Keynote and stuff. Maybe you have a bunch of images stacked up in, in an overlay type of manner. Uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. Yeah, so if you do have a PowerPoint presentation that you may want to kind of loop through the slides, uh, they added some hotkeys and I will show you how this is going to work. So. Traditionally, you would create your slides up in, in Keynote. Uh, again, I just created uh, just four simple slides, and we're going to be able to go through them sequentially inside of Ecamm Live by using a, a hotkey. So uh, again, all I did is I went to File, Export, and then I chose the uh, images. Okay. Once you choose images, you can select a folder, and that's where they all will go. Uh, the next important step that we need to do is inside of Ecamm Live, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, Keynote. Okay. And now um, I'm going to take that export that I had right here and put it into a nice little uh, folder there. I know I misspelled Keynote. But anyways, I'm going to slide them into the folder because this is the important part, is they, they have to be inside of a folder for this to kind of work. Um, reason being is once it knows that we're nested inside of this folder here, it's going to loop through them by using uh, an action. It will show and hide uh, the proper slides. Okay, so uh, again, now the key keyboard shortcut for this is going to be control shift, either right arrow or left arrow to kind of loop through them. So again, that's what I'm doing. Control shift, right arrow. I'm going to the next one. I'm going to the next one, next one, and so on. Okay, and again, you can loop through this as many times as you'd want, or you can go back uh, up and up and down, left and right, here with your with your slides, right? So, and that is control shift, either left arrow or right arrow to get that to work, all right? Um, a lot of other work that they said that they worked on, which is um, getting your widgets to work properly from Streamlabs. So uh, again, play around with it if you're one of those folks that would like to use that. Uh, but they said that they kind of reworked it on how it uh, is integrated inside of Ecamm Live. All right. So there's been a lot of new changes in Ecamm Live. Uh, again, the beta group is uh, is free for you all to to join and find out those new features. I just thought that I would present them to you here, and hopefully these will be in the uh, they said the next release uh, of Ecamm Live. All right. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for some more information. All right.